Hi guys, welcome back to The Wargamer and another Games Workshop painting tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can paint a Goliath Ganger in a yellow colour scheme using the Citadel range of paints to do so. Now before we can begin painting our miniature, we first of all need to prime it, and this is so that the later layers of paint will adhere to the surface of the miniature properly. Now for this, I've used a grey primer, as grey allows us to paint some of the lighter colours quite easily, without being too light that it makes painting some of the darker colours more difficult. The first area after priming that I'll be painting will be the trousers and also any pipes on the miniature. We want to base coat all these areas using staggered on scale green. Now, as with all the base coats that I'll be applying in this tutorial, I would recommend creating a mixture of one part paint to one part water, applying this over the surface, allowing it to dry thoroughly, and then applying a second layer over the top. The reason for doing this is it allows us to get a nice and even base coat without obscuring the details by applying the paint too thickly. With our base coat dry, we can now apply a wash of non-oil to these areas. Now this wash will flow into those recesses and help to bring out the detail by giving some depth to those more recessed areas. Now I would recommend once again creating a watered down mixture of non-oil as applying it straight out of the pot can be a little bit overpowering. So roughly two parts wash to one part water should suffice. The final step in painting our blue fabric areas is to apply an edge highlight of Thunderhawk Blue. Now, unlike our base coat, I've created a mixture of two parts paint to one part water for this, just to improve the flow of the paint. Now, using a thin brush, you want to lightly drag it over the raised sections of the areas we painted in the previous steps. This will create a lighter edge and really help to bring out the detailing in the miniature. The next area of our Goliath Ganger that we want to paint are the brown leather boots, the hair and also the wooden handles of the grenades. And we want to base coat all of these areas using dryad bark. With our dryad bark base coat completed, the next step is to apply a wash of Agrax Earthshade over these areas. By using Agrax Earthshade instead of non-oil for this wash, we will still get the shading in the recesses without dulling down the brown colouring. The final step in painting the leather boots, the grenade handles and also the hair is to apply an edge highlight using Gorthor Brown. Now as it makes much more sense to paint from the inside of the model out, we're going to be painting the skin areas next. Now we want to start off painting these areas by using a base coat of Bugman's Glow. With our base coat of Bugman's Glow completed, we now want to apply a layer of Cadian Flesh Tone over the skin areas. Now once again, I've created a mixture of one part paint to two parts water for this, and I'm going to be applying it over the skin, leaving the Bugman's Glow still visible in those recesses. As with our base coat, I would recommend allowing the first layer to dry before applying a second layer over the top. The next step in painting our skin is to apply a wash of Reikland Flesh Shade. Now this will not only flow into those recesses, helping to improve the depth of detail on this miniature, but it will also tie in the previous Bugman's Glow base coat and the Cadian Flesh Tone layer. The final step in painting our Goliath Ganger's skin is to pick out some of the more prominent areas, such as the bridge of the nose, the brow, the lips, and also the knuckles as well. And for this, we'll be using Kistler Flesh. With our skin areas completed, the next step is to paint all the leather straps on this miniature with a base coat of Mournfang Brown. With our base coat of Mournfang Brown completed, we once again want to apply a wash of Agrax Earthshade to these areas. I'll now finish off painting these leather straps by applying an edge highlight of Scrag Brown. The next area of our Goliath Ganger that I'll be painting will be the grenades themselves, and we want to use a nice bright red to stand out against the rest of the miniature. So for this, I'm going to be base coating these areas using corn red. Now, in addition to the grenades, you can also paint some of the various canisters and other details on this miniature using this color as well. With our base coat completed, we can once again reach for our pot of Agrax Earthshade to apply a wash over these areas. The final step in painting our red areas is to edge highlight them using Evil Sun Scarlet. The next area of our Goliath Ganger that we want to paint is the yellow armor. Now for this, I'm going to be using a base coat of Rakar Flesh. Now this might seem quite a strange choice considering we want to get yellow armor, but the reasoning for this will become apparent very soon. With our base coat of Rakar Flesh dried, we can now apply a wash of Seraphim Sepia. However, instead of applying the wash over the entirety of the armor, I'll instead be focusing it into some of the recesses and around some of the details such as the rivets. Now the reason for me doing this is because I still want to maintain the light coloring of the Rakar Flesh, but also still get some shading in those recesses. 
With our prep completed, we can now finally give these areas the yellow coloring that we want to finish with. Now for this, I'm applying a wash of Cassandora yellow over the areas we've painted in the previous steps. When applied, we'll get a really nice, strong and rich yellow coloring. But as with our previous washes, do make sure you slightly water down the color ever so slightly. Roughly one part water to one part wash should suffice. With our wash dried, we now want to edge highlight our yellow armor using Dawn Yellow. In addition to highlighting the edges, if you're feeling adventurous, you can also use the Dawn Yellow to apply some thin scratches into the armor itself. The final step is to apply some chipping and scratching to the yellow paint on the armor. And for this, I'm going to be using Rhinox Hide. Once dried, this will give the effect that the exposed metal areas have become slightly rusted. So you will want to use a thin brush to apply some scratches to the armor or apply some chips around the edges of the armor itself. Basically anywhere you would imagine damage would occur. The last areas of our miniature that we haven't yet painted are the metal areas. Now for this, I want to give them a dark metallic feel. So I'll be using a base coat of a bad and black to begin with. This darker coloring of the metallic areas will really contrast with the bright yellow areas that they're often next to. The final step in painting our Goliath Ganga is to roughly highlight the edges of the black areas we painted in the previous step using Stormhost Silver. And that concludes this tutorial on how to paint a Goliath Ganga for Necromunda in a yellow color scheme. Now you can find a full list of the paints I've used in this tutorial in the description below, along with links to both my Facebook page and also my Facebook group, The Wargamers. If you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below, along with your suggestions for other Necromunda color schemes you would like to see me tackle. And finally, I just want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. It's you guys who make these videos possible. And if you're interested in supporting me as well, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page, which you can find a link to in the description below. From there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which just really helps me in producing future content. And with that, all that's left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.